Hey everybody, it's Craig back to here and in this video I'm going to walk you through setting up the Ronin-S, how to balance it, and how to attach an external monitor to the Ronin-S. I'm also going to walk you through the app and going to share some tips with you. All right, let's get started. Okay, for the setup, here's some things you'll need. That's the USB cable to charge it. This is optional. I'm going to explain what I do with this in a second. Now there's the main Ronin-S, and there's another optional accessory I'm going to explain as we go through this video. Then there's the grip and then the mounting plate, and you can see the lens align tool and the tripod mount, and that's the case that comes with the wires. Now you'd screw the tripod mount into the grip, just like you're seeing right here. There's two holes, put it in the smaller one. Now there's the camera riser. You're going to need this. A lot of people forget this step. Now here's an optional part I'm going to show you in the next part here. Now this is a Manfrotto quick disconnect plate, so I'm using this instead of the camera riser. I'll put the link in the description box, but that's how it looks from the side, and that's how it looks from the top. This saves me a ton of time. I'll put a link to this in the description box below this video. You can check out that later. Now, once you have the tripod and the grip, then you want to make sure you look at the pins and how that's configured, and you slide it on that way. Some people have said they had trouble sliding this on. Just sort of look at both, and it kind of makes sense once you look at it. And then you lock it in place. Now, there's the AC adapter for charging. And on the front there, you can see there's the USB port where you would charge it. So that's the USB-C on that end. Now make sure you download the latest version of the Ronin Assistant app. Now once you've got it updated, you slide on the mounting plate from the front, and there's the pin. You've got to push that pin in in order to get that in and then lock that in place. And then there's the lens align piece that you would use. And there's the two pieces there that you would need. This is if you're using a zoom lens and you need to balance your lens. If you're using like a short prime lens, you don't. Now I'm going to explain this mounting system a little bit more later in the video. That's a quick look at it. Make sure you stick around and watch that part of the video. In this part of the video, I'm going to walk you through balancing the Ronin-S with your camera. So for this example, I'm using the Panasonic GH5 with a prime lens. I'm going to give you some tips in this part of the video. I like to use prime lenses when I'm using a gimbal, and I like to use wide-angle lenses. So for this example, I'm using a 15 millimeter, which is a 30 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. If you're using a zoom lens, I suggest going to say 24. So if it's a 24 to 70, go to your widest setting, like a 24, or if it's a 16 to 35, go to 16, balance it for that. Now I have heard some people put it in the middle of the zoom range and balance it, and they're able to use their zoom. I haven't tried that yet. I suggest experimenting with your camera and lens setup, see how that works for you. Now you can see I don't have the lens support attached, because my lens isn't long enough. If you're using a longer lens, like a zoom lens, you would attach your lens support attachment there, and then you would adjust that so that it supports your lens properly. Now, a couple other tips. Make sure that it's going to be set up the way you're going to use it. So make sure you have your battery installed, your memory card installed, your lens cap is off, and your lens hood is attached if you want to use one. Also, your camera control cable should be attached that's going to affect the balance. So I have the MCCC for Panasonic cameras. There's an optional cable for Sony users. You have to purchase that separately. So I have it set up just the way I'm going to use it. Now I'm going to walk you through the basic balance adjustments. All right, so I've set this up as if you were looking at the camera yourself. So put yourself in this position. Now the first thing you should do is to slide your camera as close as you can to the right. In order to do that, there's a little lock right here you can see. I'll just tilt that up. All you have to do is unlock that and you can shift your camera to the right. Put it as close as you can without touching. Now to adjust the fore and aft, that would be this lever right here. You would pull that back and you could slide it back and forth. That would be for your fore and aft. So if you put it on and it's really heavy, you might want to make that adjustment first. We'll get to that in a second. Now DJI recommends doing this, the vertical tilt adjustment first. So you would adjust that by adjusting this lever here. So you would unlock it. If it's falling forward, then you want to slide it toward yourself. And then if it's falling back, then you want to slide the camera forward. So it's a bit of experimentation. The first time you do this, it might be a little tricky, but once you get it down, once you know which direction affects what, it's relatively easy. So I would say make small adjustments. So I'm going to unlock it here and I'm going to throw it out of whack and I'm going to push forward on this. So I'm going to push forward on this now you should see my camera's falling forward. So in order to get that to stay up, I have to push back or towards yourself. So it's a matter of just experimenting, and then over time you're gonna realize the 
type of adjustments that need to be done and how much of an adjustment in order to level things. So we've got that pretty good right there. I'm going to tighten that down. Now from time to time you might have to make small adjustments. So that was the vertical tilt. You unlock this and then you control this by pushing either towards yourself or away from yourself. So orient yourself as if you're looking right at this gimbal. Now once you do the vertical tilt, then you would do the tilt. Now the tilt is going to control whether it tilts forward or backward. You can see I have that balanced. We're going to unlock it here. I'm going to throw it out of whack. I'm just going to push it forward a bit. I'm going to lock it. You'll see that it wants to go forward. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to just slide the mounting plate back until it balances. So you can see here, now it wants to go that way. So one thing too is to keep a grip on your camera so it doesn't flop or slide like that. So good thing that happened. But anyway, you can see here that we just need to make small adjustments and I'm going to keep my hands close to the camera until we get a good balance there. I'm going to lock it in place there. So now that's the tilt. So we have the vertical tilt, we have the tilt. Now the next one we want to do is this axis here. So the roll axis. So I'm going to push this off so you can see how it looks. I'm going to go this way. Now you can see that it's tilting that way. So if I want it to go back, I've got to push it this way. So I'm going to make my little adjustments and again, I'm just going to hold here, make sure it's locked or the lock is off. And then you can see I've got to make another adjustment here, but we're just going to adjust it till we get it right. Then I'm going to lock this in place. Now I want to check those adjustments so far. So we've got our vertical tilt. So that looks like it's a little bit off. I'm going to just check it again. That's oh, okay there now. Okay. It seems to be okay. Then we're going to check our tilt here, our fore and aft tilt. And that seems to be okay. And then we're looking at our tilt here. It seems like it's okay. I should be able to push this just about anywhere I want and have it pretty much stay there now if I've got it roughly balanced. So I'm going to look at it again. And it's really about making little tweaks. I think I need to go this way just a touch. So I'm just going to take this off. I'm going to make a small adjustment here. And again, I'm going to have a look at that. So you may have to refine some of those adjustments, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Now, the next one's the tricky one, in my opinion. Now, this is the pan axis. So they recommend pushing it 45 degrees and seeing what happens to your camera. So I'm going to tilt it this way, and we're going to watch what happens. And it shouldn't spin out of control. You can see it's just trying to maintain its balance. So to me, that looks pretty good. So the next step is to do a balance test on the app. So we'll go to the app and I'll show you how to do that balance test. Now I should have mentioned too that all of these adjustments should be done before you turn the power on. You want to make sure that this has always got a load on it so your camera in place and then it's balanced before you turn the power on because that could damage your motors. All right so let's go to the app. Okay so the next step is to turn on the power. So you hit the first button on the grip and then you hit the second button up here and then you'll see all three lights light up. You'll hear a noise and that'll indicate that the Ronin S is on. Then you'll be able to connect to the app. So I'm just going to click on that. Now if you look at the app, if you click on configuration, you'll see motor parameters, smooth track, control settings, and settings. Now if you look at this too, you also see that there's different users available. Now we have create, we have status, and we have an about. Now if I hit status, you'll be able to check your device and your battery power. Now let's just go back to the beginning. We're going to go configurations. We're going to click on motor parameters. And you can see here we have something called auto-tune. We'll get to that in just a second. Now if we go back, you can see also we have smooth track, push pan, and again we have our control settings, and we have motion. And then again, like I said, we have our settings. And you see we have general, and we have more. Now if you click on more, you'll see we have a balance test. Now first, I suggest doing a balance test, then we'll do the auto-tune. So you click on balance test, and you'll see the camera starts to go through a little bit of a test to see how well you've balanced it. So we're looking for excellent. So in a couple of seconds, we'll have that result on the app, and then we could move to step two, which is the auto-tune. Now also too, DJI recommends that you go with the default settings, although you can make adjustments to those. So our tilt, our roll, and our pan are excellent. I'm going to click OK. Now what we want to do is we want to go to our next test. So again, you could see that was the settings. If we go to control settings, if we go to smooth track, 
and then if we go to motor parameters you can see motor parameters is where the auto tune is now if you look to the left you'll see where it says mid now depending on the size and weight of your camera and lens setup they recommend either mid to high i'm going to leave it on mid for now we're going to click on auto tune it's going to auto tune for this setup so i'm going to click on auto tune right now and then it says please confirm to proceed to auto tune i'm going to say okay now you'll see a little bit of shaking you'll hear a noise and it's going through and it's just testing the weight and the setup of my camera and my lens and it's doing an auto tune for the best settings for your camera control we're at about 70 percent we're almost done once that's done we can go and change certain adjustments if we'd like so it's done and on the app the pan is 30 the tilt is 33 the roll is 29 and that's what it's set it up for now we can go to an advanced settings if i just touch that and you can see we can make adjustments to this i'm going to leave that just the way it is for right now now if we go to smooth track i have smooth track on and you can see the speed is low so that's going to give me a slower speed now you can adjust the speed the dead band and the sensitivity i suggest using the default settings to begin with see how you like them and then making adjustments to your workflow now keep in mind there's different user profiles so you could have very slow setup for user one a different setup for user two and so on so you can configure it that way now you can see also we have our pan we have our tilt i'm using smooth track in all of these if you wanted a slower tilt speed you could just click on that and say okay i want a slower tilt speed and then again with the roll I've got it on smooth track. You can see by default it's set for low. So you can just make these adjustments within the app. Now also too, you have some creative settings. So this is going to be something that you'll have to experiment with, but you can see you can control the capture. You can have panoramas, time lapse, motion lapse, track. So I'll walk you through some of these. So you can see here, right now it's set for photo. If I click there, now it's switched to video and I can control the camera with my phone with the app so if i go left for example i can drag that left you can see the camera's rotating if i go right you can see that it's rotating right you can see if i go up it's tilting up and it's tilting down what's great about this is you can mount the dji ronin to a tripod and they recommend that you are mounted to a tripod for this so that it's more stable so i can control everything with the app now again, I have smoothing and I can adjust the pan, tilt and roll speeds as well to slow that down. So that's one thing too. It's pretty hard to get a really nice pan sometimes and this will give you that ability. Now also too, if you go to the track feature, you can set up different tracking points and the duration and the time that it stays at each one of those points. Now that can give you a lot smoother movement than if you're moving the joystick or if you're moving it yourself. If you set up points beforehand that's going to give you a lot smoother movement that's the track i recommend experimenting with all of these different features and you'll have to have your camera cable attached in order for some of these features to work the gh5 is fully compatible at the time of this video they're adding more updates over time they do have a new cable for sony users and i also have a sony camera so i have to pick up that cable now you can do panoramas with this and Cable disconnected without dedicated camera control. Panor okay, well, I have the cable connected, so I don't know why it said that. But you can see here, you can set up your sensor type, the size of your lens, the overlap, and the delay for your panoramas. You can also do time lapses here. You have all your settings for interval. I suggest Googling how to do a time lapse or a motion lapse. Look for a video that will give you settings for that, and then experiment with those settings and see if they're settings that you like it's going to take some experimentation before you get time lapse and motion lapse looking the way you want so check out some videos on youtube for those specifically so those are just some of the features too if i click on camera it says camera dedicated cable disconnected and the reason for that is you have to turn on your camera in order for it to notice those things so i just remembered i didn't have my camera on it says to turn on your camera first and then turn on the ronin but it should work anyway we have it here, PC tethers, what you're looking for if you're on the GH5. Now that I've clicked that, now I should see things on my app. Now you can see it says camera Panasonic GH5. It has the shutter and the aperture. Now if I click here, I can't make those adjustments on the app, on those settings. But now if I go to motion lapse, 
it sees everything right here so that's looking good and like I said if I'm on camera that's good and so make sure your camera's on too and that it sees your camera and that makes things a little bit easier when it comes to having the panorama the time lapse or motion lapse in order for that to work now if you look at the top of your app too you can see there's a little Bluetooth icon you can see that we're connected to the Ronin if you click to the second one you can see we have our different user profiles you can see motor pause now what you can do with that is you can click on motor pause and then make small adjustments to your camera so you don't want to be fighting the motors you don't want to be doing all kinds of lens changes and stuff like that when your motors are on so you can motor pause them or you can turn the Ronin off completely swap out a lens maybe do a rebalance then start it up again so that's why that motor pause is there if you click on more you could see that they have restore gimbal uh, balance test system calibration and things like that and then at the top you can see that they have a one so you click on that again there's your user profiles now two in order to get this to go back to the where you want it if you double click the front button there it always goes to center so just make sure that you do that all right so i've taken it off the tripod and i've attached the tripod grip which makes it easier for certain modes now there's three different modes for the ronin now this is the basic one here now if i go left you can see it's panning left if i twist it right it's twisting right if I tilt down, you can see it tilts down. If I tilt up, it tilts up. Now, if I want to center it, I just double click it and it puts it back to the center position. Now, if I want to lock it, I just depress and hold this trigger. And then when I turn it left or right, nothing happens. You can see I can move it around. The camera stays locked. So I'm going to let that go. Now, to go to the different positions, all you have to do is pull this trigger in, hold it, and move it. So if we were to go to flashlight mode, I'm just going to double depress this right here to have it that way. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go into flashlight mode here, and then I can let that go. Now we're in flashlight mode. This is how you would do the roll. Now I'm going to depress that, bring it up. Now I can also go underslung. Now again for that, I'm just going to depress it, and then I'm just going to turn it upside down like that. And then you can see we're in the underslung mode, and then I can operate it. It's panning left and right. Now if I want to go back, I can just depress that trigger again and bring it back up. A little awkward. Now some people have said that the Ronin S is heavy. I don't really find it that heavy actually. It is heavy if you're in flashlight mode, but compared to other gimbals, if you're used to it, I wouldn't say that it's a deal breaker as far as heaviness. I was worried that it was going to be really heavy. It really depends on your camera and lens setup as well. I'm using a GH5 and a prime lens. I don't find it that heavy. I find it uh, pretty sturdy. I like the way it controls and I've done a few test shots and they're really good. So one thing I want to show you is how to attach an external monitor to the Ronin S. All right so with the DJI Ronin S you can see we have our focus control. Now you can mount that on the left or the right. Now by default it's on the left. I've moved it to the right. I've done some experimentation and because the cables are oriented on the left hand side I found the monitor connection works better on the left hand side. Now you'll need a few accessories. I'll put links to these down below in the description box. This is a small rig mount monitor holder. So you attach that to where the focus control goes. So you use an Allen key to disconnect the focus control, move it over to the right hand side, then take the plastic cover that was with that, put it behind this, and attach those two. Now you'll want to have this oriented like this. So with the slot facing down because if you don't it won't fit properly because you can see there's this lock control here. Now then you'll also need this NATO rail. Once you have this installed with the two screws then you'll want to slide this on. Now this is a NATO rail that locks in place. So all you have to do is take it to the wide portion of this connection, orient it on, and slide it up. It's on a bit of an angle. You may find it a little tricky at first. I couldn't figure out how to get it on. Once you get that on then you lock the NATO rail in place. You push up, just look at the little arrows. Then you can just turn this little lever here and then you can adjust the orientation of the NATO rail. So again, I'll put links to these in the description box below. Now then you'll also need this small rig field monitor holder. Now this slides onto the NATO rail. So you can see here, it doesn't slide onto the top, it slides onto the bottom. So you can play with this configuration. You can move this over to the right if you like, whatever works for you. This just happens to be the setup that I have. And then again, you wanna make sure that this is unlocked and 
you can see I'm trying to attach this and it doesn't seem to want to go that way. So what you'll have to do is just sort of play with it. You can see it works if you slide it on the bottom. If you let go, it should stay there. So experiment with this if you're not used to using these devices. At first, I couldn't figure out how to hook it up myself, but you can see it fits on this way. Then again, I would lock this in place where I want it. Now also too, you can adjust these Allen keys and you can maneuver this hinge so you can bend it in different directions as well. So then it's just a matter of sort of setting that up where you want it and then controlling that lever right there to lock it in place. And then you can attach your field monitor. So for example, I've got the Ninja 5. I can screw that on here. So I'll just do that and show you how that looks. So then again, make sure you have the Ninja 5 set up the way you want it. Make sure you've got the battery attached, the SSD. I'm going to attach this here. And then it's just a matter of attaching your HDMI cable to your camera. And then you can monitor what you're seeing with the Ronin S. And then once you get your monitor in place, it's a matter of just sort of fine tuning the adjustment here, slotting it to where you want it. And then again, you can adjust this hinge with the Allen keys and then maybe tilt it up towards yourself. Now, one thing I found too was when I had the HDMI hooked up to the Atmos Ninja 5, I lost control of the back of my camera. So one thing you'll probably want to do with that setup is to make sure that you have your exposure set right, your aperture, your shutter speed, everything. And then you can just monitor the shots on your Ninja. All right, so I just want to show you how this looks when it's hooked up. Now, when you have the HDMI, for some reason, when it's hooked up to the DJI Ronin S, you lose control of the back of your screen, which means you can't see this information. Because if you wanted to display the HDMI information with all your camera settings, then that would record that. So if you're recording to this on the Ninja 5, you want to make sure that you have your exposure, everything set up the way you want it, and then you can record to this. So first set everything up, then plug in the HDMI cable when you're ready to go. Now, if you want to make some small adjustments to say your aperture, just make sure you know which control on the camera adjusts your aperture. So if you can see that you just move to a different scene if you're outdoors and it's a little brighter, you can at least adjust your aperture and use the zebras on this monitor without having to sort of disconnect everything. I know it's kind of a weird uh, situation. If you know of a better way to do this, that's fine. Let me know, that'd be great. Now, also too, what I'll do is I'll turn on the camera and we'll record. So now we can record to the Ninja. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record to the Ninja and you'll see what I'm getting from this camera. So I'm just going to hit record on the Ninja. And now this is going to record what we're looking at. Now I'll show you the focus feature. I'm going to put this out of focus with the focus control knob. And then using the peaking on the Ninja, I can just sort of zoom in with this. Now I can also use the two times zoom so I can zoom in and then I've got the peaking feature and now we're in focus. Now you don't need an external monitor to do those things. You can do that on the camera itself. I just want to show you sort of how the monitor functions with the setup and with the Ronin. Now, like I said, you could just use the camera the way it is, use the zoom in feature on the GH5 with the focus control, but the focus control works great. And with the monitor, it just gives you a bigger screen if you're working outdoors. I just want to show you how that works. So also, there is an optional cable I mentioned for Sony that gives you more functionality. That's a separate optional purchase that you'll need if you have a Sony camera. Hey, it's Craig Becker here once again. Thanks for watching this video. Now, let me just say, if you have any support-related questions to the Ronin S or any camera compatibility issues, contact DJI Support. They have a support desk set up to address your questions. I'm not related to DJI in any way. So if you have any support related questions or any problems or issues, contact DJI support. I'm going to put a link to their support desk in the description box below. Now also, all of the equipment that I've used in this video, I'm going to put links to that in the description box below as well. So just look at that after you watch this video and you can check out all the gear that I used for this video and with my Ronin S. And like I said again, I'm not DGI support. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. If you have any support related questions, contact DGI for that. All right. Thanks for watching this video. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification. And when I come out with a new video, which I do every week, you'll get an update via email. So go ahead, hit subscribe. Also hit that like. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. All right. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.